Good morning, everyone. How are you all doing on this fine Monday morning? It is my last day uh, here in Cincinnati, and uh, it's a very heartbroken city this morning, thanks to both Cincinnati and Xavier bowing out yesterday in fantastic fashions. Well, not so fantastic if you're in this city and a fan of either of those teams, but if you're looking at it from the outside and just throwing it as throwing those two games as part of the whole weekend, this has been probably the most memorable first two rounds I think we've ever seen. It's upset after upset and close game after close game. I think there were more close games than there were medium to blowout games. It's been so much fun. The first two days were fantastic, and I was a little worried about that the second round wouldn't quite match it. But after, and the, the first two games on Saturday when it made me go, well, well, here we go. We had the first two days. Here comes our blowouts, and all the blue bloods are just going to advance on like they're supposed to. But no! No, Loyola of Chicago shocks us again. And after that, it just felt like most of the games were just tightly contested, including a, another buzzer beater where, unfortunately for American Athletic Conference fan me, cost Houston the game. And then, you know, the day after, Purdue is in a tight one with Butler, and that one was so back and forth. And then, then the, the, the Cincinnati game where Cincinnati was up 22 with 11 minutes left, and then Nevada just goes on this crazy run, just a crazy run, and wins that game with, by, with what, a layup with about 10 seconds left off of an offensive rebound? Cincinnati got your box out, yo. And then on the very same floor in Nashville, next game, another Cincinnati-based team and number one seed, Xavier, up 12 or 10 or up double digits in the latter part of the second half. Blows it against Florida State and out goes another number one seed. Not to a 16, but still, you know, you've lost two number one seeds going into the Sweet 16. And it, the most interesting part of the South bracket is that the top seed remaining is Kentucky at five. You know, Virginia law is the first team to lose to a 16. Cincinnati bows out in that incredible comeback, which still to this which still leaves me very heartbroken. Tennessee got upset by Loyola of Chicago, and big shout out to those guys. They have been fun to watch. Um, and the, the four seed Arizona got crushed by by Buffalo. So what's what's left? Kentucky at a five, Kansas State. I think it was is a nine. They they were part of that eight nine game. I think they were the nine. Yes, they were. They were the nine. Um, so you have the five, the nine, the seven, which is Nevada, and the eleven, which is Loyola. I mean. That's incredible. That is fantastic. I don't think we've quite seen a region going into the Sweet 16 like that. Uh, so, uh, as part of this video this morning, instead of, now that I've gone over the first two rounds, it's time to set up the Sweet 16. Thursday's games, Loyola, and Nevada. How improbable is that? You know, Cincinnati blowing that lead. And they would have they would have matched up very well against Loyola. I was a little worried that Nevada wasn't a fantastic matchup for Cincinnati, and it looks like I was right. I would have much rather had them play Texas. I think if they had played Texas, it would have been a close game, but I think it would have been a much better, much better matchup because Nevada shoots the lights out of the ball. And boy, did they in the last 10 minutes of that game yesterday. But 
Loyola plays Nevada. Texas A&M plays Michigan. Michigan has been one of the picks that I've made that has looked as good as I thought they would. Um, they, yes, they've been in close games, but they've won the games. Uh, Texas A&M, another, that's another one of those upsets that I saw yesterday that was amazing to me, and not that they won, but that they blew, they blew UNC away. They beat North Carolina by, what, 21? Like, that's two... I, I know I've said there have been a lot of close games, but two of the bigger upsets in Texas A&M over North Carolina and UMBC over Virginia weren't even close. There was no pride in those uh, in those blue bloods. Um, Kansas State plays Kentucky. We just went over that one. Um, Florida State, after pulling off that fantastic upset on Xavier, gets Gonzaga. Congrats to Gonzaga. Another one of those close, fun games. And that, that one was fun because the them and Ohio State went back and forth and back and forth. It just adds to It just adds to what was great about the first four days of this tournament, which I'm so happy I got to come home for. Because I love watching the I love watching the first two rounds, and then usually the second two rounds I don't usually mind um, missing as much. But it was so it was so good that you just couldn't peel yourself away. Uh, but then the Friday games we have Clemson versus Kansas, and Clemson in one of those more seemingly more rare blowouts beat the crap out of Auburn, and I didn't see what the final was, but I know that they were up something like 30 at some point in the second half. Um, West Virginia. Uh, West Virginia has won both their games really convincingly, and that's been another pick where I go, yeah, I have them going far. I don't know how far I really trust them, but they've probably actually looked like they probably look like the best team so far in the first four days. It and through the first two rounds, they've been they have been on it. Although Duke has been very good too, Villanova has been pretty good too. Um, <clears throat> upset for Syracuse, and I know I pro- picked um, Michigan State, but um, <laughs> you can't deny how good. Jim Beheim is when it comes to the tournament. He's made many a runs. I know he's only got one title, but the way that team plays defense is so different and unique that if you're not within that conference, it's very hard to work with. And they did a heck of a job on Miles Davis. I didn't see what the numbers were for Miles Davis, but I know at one point he was only like one for ten. The the defense was just clamped down on Syracuse and they made some very key free throws uh, to to wrap that game up so congratulations to Syracuse I know I maybe talked a little bit of trash about you being in the first four and maybe not deserving to get in but when it comes down to whether or not you get in and how you play when you get there are two very different things so do I at this point, I'm still, you know, on the fence on whether or not they deserve to be in in the first place. But I will not take anything away from how they did play once they got there, because that's what matters most. Uh, so Syracuse plays Duke, so we finally have a conference matchup. Um, I think Duke's gonna Duke, Duke is going to prevail on that one as I was just saying they're in the same conference they've seen they see Syracuse often enough that they know they're going to be ready for that uh, crazy zone and in one of the few games that actually went kind of chalk Purdue versus Texas Tech um normally I think I take Purdue but I know but uh Haas is you know still dealing with his Broken elbow, and there was a great. By, by the way, there was a great feature on ESPN yesterday on um, on on Isaac Haas. Please watch it. It is heart wrenching, and it is a great, great story. Um, but Texas Tech and Purdue, 
Um, that's that's going to be. For, I think that's going to be the matchup to watch um, in the second round. But um, that's how that is going to set up for the Sweet 16. Um, so it is now early enough in the morning, and I still do have a few things to do before I get out of here. So it's, I'm going to switch up my schedule a little bit. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to be back home. I've got my back to work. Sadly, I would love this to be what I do for a job one day. But as it is, right now I have to do the real life -y thing. But um, tomorrow I will be back on a normal schedule. And I will do my usual what I usually do on Monday. I will do the weekend that was on Tuesday and treat it like a three-day weekend. Because I still have to pack and get all my equipment in. And there's still like two or three things I have to do with my family here, which would take away from the amount of time that it actually takes me to record and upload. So to save time, I'm going to just do this video as a thoughts on the first two rounds plus Sweet 16 mini preview. Um, tomorrow I will do maybe more of an extended preview, plus the usual cinema film news that I do, um, and some of the topics that weren't as, um, covered maybe while I was in town. So, um, tomorrow is going to be back to normal. Um, I'm going to do a little more GoPro shots today as I head back. Um, I'm very excited to fly back through uh, John F. Kennedy Airport because the last time I flew through there, I was maybe 10 or 11, and I don't really have recollections of that, but me and my, um, my uh, <laughs> fun little fascination with air travel and my love of air travel is looking forward to getting a chance to wander the terminals and this time this time we're going to be looking I have still yet to see an Airbus A380 I'm going to be looking looking hard and um hopefully I'll get to take some cool pics I know when I was in Detroit I tried using my my GoPro and I'm not I'm still getting used to that camera Plus, still a little iffy about doing filming like that in heavily populated public places, just because I don't want people to sort of snap at me for filming things, but eventually I'm sure I'll get over that hump. Uh, but <clears throat> I, what I'm going to do is if there's any pictures that I do take tonight, I will... Um, put them up on my, I will take them with my phone and I will put them up on Twitter. So that'll be fun to sort of explore a, an airport that I haven't really had a chance to. Um, but, uh, it's going to be a late night. My flight's out are in this afternoon, so we'll, we'll, we'll just see how it goes. I'm also going to be traveling back with my, with my sister, so it'll be fun. It'll be fun. It's going to be a good time. I hope to get some good footage while I'm there. Um, and be, but before I end this, while I'm still here and thinking about it, I do want to give a nice little shout-out to one of the new breweries that I visited this weekend. Fretboard Brewing in Blue Ash had one of the most interesting beers. And I know this is sort of going off topic, but you know that I'm a big craft beer person, and I don't want to forget this while I'm still in town, because it's, it's it was just a fantastic time, even though I went there on St. Patty's Day. But they have a beautiful new tap house. They've only been open since November of... 2017 so they're still working on building their brand but their brand is a lot of fun it's a lot of musician themed names for their beers it's like one of them I had was 
um, based off of a founding member of Fish. However, the beer that I would like to focus on was based on was called Shimmy Shimmy Cocoa Pop. Uh, it was a red ale, if I remember. But it was almost like taking a slice of German chocolate cake, like boozy German chocolate cake, or like a, a slightly boozy hot cocoa, and turning it into an amber ale. And I, just from sip one, I was turned on by this, by this little, by this little shot of beer that I had. And I, I give a lot of four, over fours if I like a beer on untapped. It's hard for me to completely give a five because usually what puts a beer from a four to a five or a 4.25 to a five is the uniqueness of it. And while I really like a lot of beers, some of them aren't as unique. And I gave this one a five out of five. It was one of the best beers I've ever had. And you have to like sweet beers and sweet stuff in order to enjoy this. Uh, but, um, but it, it was a treat. And I'd like to give them a little bit of a shout out. Fretboard Brewing in Blue Ash, Ohio. I will leave a link to their website in the description of this video. Check them out. They are fantastic. I hope if you're ever in town, because they only serve it on tap. They don't bottle, they don't can. But if you're in, ever traveling through, or if you live in the area, check them out. They're fantastic. Um, and when I come back, I hope to, I am going to be making that part of my usual rotation of places to visit. Um, and the people there were so nice. They were fantastic. You know, even though they were busy, they would stop and tell you a little story about how their startup was. Um, I wish I had taken my GoPro. I really do. It was, it was, it's a beautiful tap house. It's a beautiful setting. So, uh, fretboard brewing. Way to go. Shout out for you. Um, and it's time for me to wrap this up because I've got to get this uploaded and get packing. Uh, so until I see you all again in Burlington, Vermont, cheers.